Hi, I'm Patu from Free Fin Cal. Today, I want to talk to you about an all-weather portfolio that will work in all market conditions. And if you consider investing in such a portfolio, uh, I have received a couple of suggestions to uh, reanalyze this portfolio that I had talked about uh, several years ago in uh, July 2013, I think. Uh, I thank them for this. I don't remember the names right now. I apologize. So in July 2013, I talked about what is known as a permanent portfolio by Harry Brown. This involves investing 25% in stocks, 25% in bonds, 25% in uh, gold and 25% in cash. So the idea is that uh, when, the, when the economy is doing well, when the stock market is doing well, you have stock exposure to get returns from. When you have a recession, you have cash exposure, example a liquid fund. When you have fear, uncertainty, and in times of inflation, you have gold. And uh, during times of deflation, and uh, uh, again, when there is a, a problem with the, you know, when the interest rates uh, are in increased and so on, you have long-term bonds. Uh, these bo that, that is, you can either have uh, buy the bonds or you can track via uh, a mutual fund. So the idea with the permanent portfolio is that you have 25% of stocks, 25% of cash, 25% of gold and 25% of bonds with annual rebalancing. And in Brown's own words, an investor is financially safe no matter what the future brings, no matter what the economic conditions you are considered to be in good hands. So in order to simulate this, I have taken uh, Sensex Total Returns Index from September 1996. For cash, I have taken the NAV of JM Liquid Fund. This is the oldest liquid fund in India with a NAV starting from 31st December 1997. I have uh, extrapolated uh, based on the daily returns back to September 1996. So I have a complete set of data. Gold I have taken from the, from the Gold Council. This is the gold price per in INR per troy ounce. Uh, the long term bonds have just taken the IBEX uh, long term guilt index uh, from again from September 1996. And this is the full data set. If you would like, I think it's better if I show you in a separate image. And so you can see here the black, uh, the black line is the permanent portfolio. The blue line is the Sensex. The red line is the sovereign bond index. The gold is represented by the green line and the liquid fund is shown in the purple line. You may not be able to see the purple line if you can't make out the color. It's the bottom one here. And you can see 25% of all the above uh, gives you the black line, which is a nice, uh, which keeps moving no matter what. The volatility is fairly decent. And it, the only time it got significantly affected, it did get significantly affected relatively in its, for its own standards in the 2008 crash relatively. But then uh, again, in this recent crash, it got affected a little bit. But other than that, uh, the fund has been uh, fairly uh, uh, less volatile. Naturally, it will react when, uh, when, I have, when you have 25% of stocks and stocks fall, it will react. But the reaction will be significantly lower. Now the point is that uh, uh, there's no need to uh, assume that uh, people are talking about such such portfolios only in, in the time of uh, you know uh, during a market crash. This is the 10 year 165 10 year uh, rolling SIP uh, returns of the Sensex which is in blue and then the red line is the 10 year uh, SIP or in the permanent portfolio that is if I have a mutual fund which is tracking the permanent portfolio, then that would be the returns. And that's pretty much awesome. For most part of the time, it's giving you double digit returns. Of course, the Sensex has also fallen down and therefore the returns have also kind of fallen down, but still it's giving you eight-ish, nine-ish percent. But look at the spread in the returns. In Sensex, you get a huge spread in the possible returns. But in this case, the spread in is only about five to six percent spread. And that's pretty awesome. It's a low volatile uh, portfolio which is uh, really just performed fantastically well and uh, yesterday we talked about the uh, Graham portfolio that is 50% bond and 50% Sensex now I have compared the permanent portfolio with that in this graph the blue line is the blue dots are the 50% bonds plus 50% Sensex portfolio uh, 10 year SIP returns rolling SIP returns and here again the permanent portfolio is shown and you can see that even with 50% bonds and 50% stocks the portfolio has done relatively 
very decently, the spread and returns are still significantly lower. So it's fantastic. The only problem now is that this even let's assume there is a mutual fund that gives you this kind of a uh, all weather uh, permanent portfolio with 25% bond, 25% gold, 25% stocks, and 25% cash. It will be regarded as a debt fund by the tax uh, uh, tax department because the equity component is less than 65%. So how about we have um, an equity oriented permanent portfolio with 25% of stocks, 40% of arbitrage, 25% gold, 5% um, of guilds and 5% of cash. Of course, you can change it a little bit. I just chose it that way. If, if I did that and I chose Kotak arbitrage, which has got the oldest, which is the oldest uh, category uh, arbitrage fund in the category. And from October 2005, you can see that, uh, let me just make this bigger. So you can see that the permanent portfolio is in black. The equity oriented permanent portfolio with arbitrage is the purple line with the dotted purple line. And you can see that the, um, the, I mean, the similarity is fairly reasonable. So it is possible to have a permanent portfolio. Uh, the mutual fund should consider doing this. In fact, multi-asset funds, they should not be allowed to choose whatever allocation they want other than the minimum 10% and they should, they should, uh, the SEBI should mandate that they determine it very clearly. And um, if, if at least some of them adopt this kind of approach, a very nice uh, significant exposure in three or four asset classes, then it would probably give you much better volatility control uh, at the cost of some returns, but that's fine. I mean, um, for most investors, I think that's fairly decent. So it has got, it has, uh, this portfolio has done quite well, the permanent portfolio in India, in spite of being in a uh, developing economy and all that, it has still done well. Um, individuals can also adopt it, but they will not, most of them will not because most people fear taxes, but mutual funds should be able to come up with this model and create a permanent portfolio, I think that would make a big difference uh, for us. So uh, it, the point is, this is not a conservative portfolio. I want to point this out. This is not a conservative because you can't say, uh, you can't say uh, because I'm holding 70% equity, I'm uh, I'm going to beat inflation in the long run. There's no guarantee of that. This gives you 8, 9, 10% returns, maybe even more returns and the, the spread in the returns in the past is so low that you can even reasonably project it into the future. So this is not a conservative portfolio. Don't mark it as conservative. It is only uh, the, the problem is having more equity is actually an uncertain portfolio. So uh, it has done quite well. And uh, I hope some mutual fund comes up with this.